As part of my series on the Big Bang, today I wanted to discuss the Big Bang's flatness problem. And for those that aren't aware of it, because some physicists think that space is curved based on Einstein's idea that space has curvature, they think that the universe has curvature. And because the universe, under the Big Bang model, starts at a point and grows in a spherical shell, they think that the universe should have curvature like a sphere has curvature. And you can think of it in terms of the longitudinal and latitudinal lines on the globe, that there's this curved outer surface and curved lines instead of straight lines. And I'll put up a little image that's typically shown where they have one type of universe that's like a globe and another one that's open and they it's normally depicted as a saddle shape and then there's perfectly flat universe where the geometries are flat and well behaved. Well the problem comes about because the universe is flat as far as we can tell. It's geometrically flat. Now there is a small error bar in the measurement and based on that error bar they say that the universe could be not flat, but it would have to be at least 93 billion light years in size, even though they say it's only 13.8 billion light years old, which of course violates the speed of light limit unless you do a lot of tricks that have nothing to do with real physics, um, because nothing violates the speed of light limit. Um, or at least light and objects don't move faster than the speed of light limit. So, we have this problem that space is flat, but there's a theory that space is curved. And so, physicists have a hard time reconciling that. Well, the real problem is, space isn't curved. If we look at the definition of space, it comes down to space being a balanced container that contains all matter. Space by itself isn't physical. Space is just an abstract container that's non-physical. But Einstein, in his Gedanken experiment, his thought experiment, said, well, what if space were physical and had physical dimensions? And what if it had physical clocks, too? And then what if those physical dimensions and clocks changed around large bodies of matter like stars? Then we could have his theory of general relativity. But what physicists don't seem to realize is this is just a thought experiment. It's purely imaginary. There's no physical basis for space having dimensions by itself. And so space doesn't have dimensions by itself if you're a real physicist because there's no physical evidence for it. It's just imaginary construct. But what does have dimensions is the quantum field. All real space, as far as we know, contains a quantum field which is composed of quantum fluctuations. Quantum fluctuations have wavelengths and frequencies. Wavelengths have dimensions in meters and they have frequencies in cycles per second. So, wavelengths and frequencies have dimensions and time. It's the quantum field that has the dimensions and has the clock rates, not space by itself. The quantum field also has a rest frame. It has a frame of reference where its torque and its constants are at their minimum fixed level and the speed of light's at the maximum. Because two of those constants are the permittivity and permeability, which are related to the torque that occurs between these quantum fluctuation dipoles. I have other videos on that that are linked to below. And so we end up with distances and frequencies emerging from space along with permittivity and permeability, the electric and magnetic constants, and electric, electric constant times magnetic constant equals one over the speed of light squared, 
so it gives us the speed of light, and everything else emerges from the quantum field. Nothing emerges from non-physical space. And so this quantum field, it has, as Maxwell realized, a rest frame where the speed of light's at the maximum, which means the permittivity, no, and yeah, the permittivity and permeability are at the minimum. And it's at this minimum is where we can identify the rest frame. And we've identified the rest frame experimentally in measurements of the cosmic microwave background. The CMB has a rest frame, and we know our velocity relative to it. And the CMB emits black body radiation. It follows black body radiation spectrum, and black body radiation from a vacuum involves quantum fluctuation interactions. So the black body spectrum of the CMB tells us that we have a black body spectrum made of quantum fluctuations that's emitting a spectrum due to a temperature of the quantum field back in time, or a temperature of some other bodies back in time. We're not sure exactly, although the Big Bang theorists will say it's the Big Bang. Uh, I, I'll do another video on that, on the CMB causing the Big Bang, or being proof of the Big Bang, because it's not. So anyway, we have a situation where all the dimensions are flat in the rest frame and the clock rates are flat in the rest frame. In an ideal rest frame, we have no disturbance at all under what Einstein would have termed special relativity. Then under general relativity, there's a incre local increase in torque due to the distribution of matter, which changes the speed of light. And it changes the speed of light, not space curvature. And this is something Einstein realized when he was first developing general relativity from 1907 to 1912, that instead of using space curvature, you can have a variable speed of light and you can still develop general relativity. And that was further developed by Robert Dickey in 1957. And since then, physicists have ignored it, that you can do a real model based on the real physical dimensions of quantum field theory, but you have to get rid of the curved space model and use a variable speed of light uh, model instead. And so we have a choice. But the way to get rid of the flatness problem is you reject the this space curvature model. Space doesn't have dimensions by itself. Space can't curve by itself. The idea of space curvature is fictitious physics. There is no flatness problem. There never was. There's a Big Bang Theory problem. The Big Bang Theory problem is what's wrong. And physicists should have realized that. You have a measurement that says the universe is flat. The universe is flat. Accept it, move on, adapt your theories to flatness. Don't try to pretend that this space isn't, space isn't flat when we know it is. I mean, a, a real physicist has to go with the real evidence. Well, I hope you like my video, and if you do, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you're interested in more of my research, I have this and other of the 100 Greatest Lies in Physics in my book, The 100 Greatest Lies in Physics. And I describe uh, a lot more about physical theories in my, both my book, The Zero Point Universe, and my recent book, Goodbye Quarks, The Ending Theory. And by purchasing one of my books, you help support my research as I'm an independent research. So I appreciate it if you do that. I also have a Patreon account. Uh, so thanks for your support and thanks for watching.